Episode 33 from Shrooms to Skyrim with Matthew and Hyrule. Forgot to turn it up. Are you getting the whole gang together? Yeah. With Matthew and Hiram. Episode 33, man. We really getting up there. I feel, we, like, I feel like we vets now. We are definitely getting up there. Uh, uh-oh. I think it happened, Matthew. Shit yourself? No. Nope. I think I dropped my phone in your in your couch again. <laughs> again? Yet Yo, again. You, just, you just gotta leave it. We're not going through this no, right no, now. No, no, no. I mean, uh, that's a problem. I mean, that's always a problem with me. We're, Jesus we're just Christ. gonna have to get it later. We'll get it later. Yeah, uh, I had some research on there. Yo, Shit, I, I, I need that. I told you, <laughs> I told you, you're banned from having things on your pockets. We, yeah, I know. I, I, and here's the shitty part: is that I actually do need it to go head to head with you. But that's fine. We're gonna do it off the top of my mind. Okay. Fuck. I mean, you want to go head to head? Tell you what, we don't need pants. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now that's a party. <laughs> now that is a party, ladies that's and gentlemen. Something. Damn it. Damn it to hell. All right. Yeah, you you, you want you want to get it? No, man. You sure? No, man, cuz you're going to leave the camera on me and it's going to look ridiculous and then you're going to make fun no, of me. Oh, I'll pause it. I'm going to pause it. Okay, pause it. How are you doing? Let me tell you something. Tell me something. Before you go on the couch, uh-huh. Empty your fucking pockets. I mean, you're get a little let's move let's move forward from the pocket let's situation. Leave, uh, I mean, you know, let's just no, move this, forward from This it. has happened too many times. I mean, okay. okay. All right. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. We have to we have to set ground rules. Okay. Oh, well, that's one of the ones I'm going to keep breaking. I'm just going to tell you that right now. So <laughs> Man, it is what it is. Oh, phone situation has made me uh, completely lose my train of thought. I was, I was, I was on it, but now I'm thinking about your pockets and the couch and your I, phone. We're good, man. Let's just move forward. Let's move forward. <coughs> this is a. Uh, it's preposterous. It's preposterous. What it's a, preposterous. A revolt- it's completely unprofessional. It's truly what it is. Development. It's it, hey, look, I'm drinking Monster, people. You know it's going to be a good podcast when I drink Monster. Probably get some Beavis and Butthead impressions <laughs> at the very least. If you behave yourself, I promise I'll do one. <laughs> Just one? Just maybe two. Um, so how was your week? What were what were you going to talk about? What What's going on? Oh, fucking no. Let me tell you something. Tell me something. <clears throat> it's a constant struggle. In this cruel world, oh, you know what I'm saying, to uh, you know, human nature is uh at odds with itself. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going here? I don't know. I lost my fucking train of thought. It's Where? episode 33 from Shrooms to Skyrim with Matthew and Hiram. I'm Matthew. I'm joined by my faithful co-host Hiram, <laughs> that motherfucker over there on the couch. Dropping his phone in it all the goddamn time. All uh, right. We in this bitch. Let me tell you something. I finally watched Eternals. How do you feel? Last week. How do you feel about Eternals? And let me tell you something. <laughs> I watched it on Shrooms, too. <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, make a note of that. Was it IMAX? No. No? Oh, okay. I mean. <laughs> it was. I was it. maxed. <laughs> I maxed, okay? I maxed out. I maxed out. Oh my! Where'd you go see it? Uh, South Miami. Okay. Sunset. It's like my. I don't, now that I've said now, I'm, now that I'm saying that's my go-to theater, I'm gonna have to find another theater. Oh, I'll tell you which so, one to go to. So all pe- fair, so people don't stalk me. The one that we went to the last time. I'm down. I like that place. But um, yeah, I went there with my little show me domies. I got some uh. I wait, overspent on food. Oh. Got some uh, lukewarm, <laughs> even though they heated them up. It took fucking like three minutes to do it, or like four minutes. Ew. I missed like half the credits, but they're still fucking lukewarm, little cinnamon pretzel things. Oh, okay. I need something to eat the shrooms with. Uh, so you ate the shrooms in the theater? Yeah, that that's my thing. I, I, I get there, 
and then uh then I board the board the mothership blast off. Wow. And then I like doing that. That's how I watched uh Into the Spider Verse. <sighs> that's so a- that that's like you're focused on the plot of the movie, right? Right. And then all of a sudden You don't you don't even feel the shrooms. <laughs> all of a sudden you're like, is this like all of a sudden, you're just in the movie. At some point, you're just you're in there like swimwear, okay? It's fucking phenomenal. You don't feel it happen. It you know you just you're 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 the, now immersed in the picture. It's just like <laughs> it's just like the the night slowly takes you away into the night. What's that? So slowly you go slowly into the night. Uh, what? No, isn't it a uh, rage against the dying of the light? Is that what you're thinking of? Uh, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Oh, I'll okay. tell you that right now. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, no, I'm talking about going slowly into the night. Slowly, slowly into the night. Uh, yeah. The next thing I know, I was fucking up in the bitch with a. How that, long? How long before it before it kicked in? I don't know, like halfway. I mean, this movie is like three hours long. It's like two hours and forty five minutes long, man. Yeah, it's definitely so I was, long. I was definitely the, like the majority of the movie tripping balls. Because <laughs> let me tell you, like when I when I left the theater, I was like, well, first of all, I fucked up. I fucked up. First of all, this shit ended up. This expedition cost me like fucking forty dollars because I didn't plan. I just kind of did it on a whim. <laughs> In between the ticket. On uh, like a fucking Thursday night as opposed to like Tuesday matinee prices. Oh yeah. And um Oh yeah. <laughs> then the food is like fucking eighteen dollars. Dude, it's ridiculous how much they charge for that shit ass food. You know what? It's not a fuck the nostalgia of movie theater food. <laughs> First of all, the popcorn's fucking trash. Garbage. Movie theater popcorn's tr- I, I don't Garbage. know if it used to be good. I'm just sneaking my food in this point. I don't give a fuck. Fuck the nostalgia. It's, it's just not worth <laughs> the last it. Last time I like went, I said, I the shit was my- the shit wasn't even hot. <laughs> and I almost missed the whole credits and beginning the movie because they had to heat it up oh man and it wasn't even well that's not their fault that's your fault you got there late Planned no no I'm, I'm just pointing out like they planned it, for that man they, they could have just fucking handed it to me off the rack also you were doing because there was no heat in the movie theater. i hadn't done them yet <laughs> i mean planning, i did you were planning to use their f- shitty food product i wasn't <laughs> eating mushrooms okay the have you seen those clips coming out where, where uh the, the movie theater employees are like we can see what happens in the theater no, with like the, the, they have night vision cameras. Oh, so I mean, I I think they would much prefer for a motherfucker to go in there and and chomp down on some cinnamon pretzel bites with some shroomy doomies than uh to get uh fellatio in the mm. middle row. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I listen, I agree, and I think for sanitary reasons, we should all feel that way about movie theaters. There are not places to go to get fellatio. Unless you're a teenager, because that's that's where I. I, I mean, I'm not going to encourage that. Kind I of, I mean, I I will say that I missed a I what I I attended but did not watch a lot of movies so in, in me youth. So did I. <laughs> so did I. I, I, I just, I'm not encouraging that kind of behavior. But yeah, so did I. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember uh, one of but, them in um, particular was a uh, uh, Four Wives Club. What the fuck exactly. is that? Exactly. Nobody was in that theater <laughs> to watch Four <laughs> Wives Club at nine o'clock at night with my girlfriend at the time. But yeah, the fact that they have—I mean, I guess it makes sense they have night vision cameras. But you know, when you're a kid, you're not thinking about those things. No. Uh, so you went. You paid a ridiculous sum of money to go oh, yeah. watch this movie. That's what I was talking about. Okay. Like Which like thirteen I've, something for the ticket, then like eighteen something for the food. It's ridiculous. Oh yeah, because I got, I got a chocolate milk. I'm like cinnamon pretzels. I think some chocolate milk will go good with that. Oh, and the mushrooms. And then for whatever reason, I bought a fucking big ass bottle of water. Let that me was a good you. call. No, it was a bad call. Oh, you had to pee for two hours. <laughs> two hours. <laughs> like it was a. Uh, so like I'm tripping and I had to piss. I didn't want to miss the movie. And it was uh it was a battle of willpower, let me tell you that right now. I mean, you could have gotten up in a lot of scenes in that movie and come back and still known what was going on. No, like here's the thing. If I if like I if I would have missed the beginning of the movie, 
Uh-huh. Because of the pretzels. Right. You already. Because the thing, the movie was a 25 p.m. showing. I guess it's already been out for like a month. There was no other showings after that. And um, I got there 8.30. Or no, I parked at 8.30. By the time I got in there, 8.35. Yeah. But I still have plenty of time. Right. Here's the thing, though. The way I am, if I would have missed, like if I would have walked in and the beginning of the movie would have been playing, uh-huh. I would have walked back out and said, can I get, please get a refund on this ticket? Like, Yeah, I've, I've done that. Like, I've, I can't enjoy a movie once or, I, if I missed the beginning. I've done that. Like, I, or I've just switched it to another movie. Well, yeah, but I'm saying, I'm saying I wouldn't have been able to watch right, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know what you're saying. And it would have been worse if I missed something in the middle because then I would have had to watch the whole beginning over. Like, I can't. You know how I am. I can't. It's all or nothing. Oh. So, let me tell you. I. You took notes? No. Were you the only person in the theater? No, it was um, it's like a quarter full. Okay. Unfortunately. Why is it always fucking people in the theater when I am tripping balls? Uh, because oh it's a public place at 930 at night. I mean, I think the answer is pretty self-explanatory there, big guy. Um, There's always, like, people in the group hanging out with their friends, significant others, and family, and I'm just fucking there by myself. Tripping balls. (laughs) Maybe you should get a little introspective. (laughs) Get yourself a girlfriend, maybe two, you know, (laughs) date around. I mean, I'd get jealous. But besides that, um, so what was your oh, yeah, opinion so I, of the movie? Finally, I didn't know what to expect with all the things I heard about it. You been talking about it's lackluster. It was lackluster. Here's the, I'm gonna tell you right now. Then we're gonna get into it. I give it eight point five out of ten. I'm not going to be mad at that. Movie was a solid effort. I'm not going to be mad at that score. And was it better than Chung Chi? Some regards. <laughs> it, it's like no, just because it's MCU movie, it's a completely different movie. Oh no, I know, I know. Please. So it's Please. like I would say James Gunn is an MCU I would say, look, movie that's like, completely different. I would movie. say look like it's both fruit, but that's apple and oranges. You know what I'm saying? Fruit metaphors. So I think I got some things to get into. I think uh, this movie is being like unfairly rated because of expectations. Okay. Because like you're asking me if it's better than Shang Chi, but this movie was in a, a you know on a completely different uh, had completely different set of goals. Than Shang Chi, yeah, so, no, I I get it, I get it. I was just saying if you were if you had to choose which one you would watch again, you're probably gonna go with Shang Chi as opposed to the Eternals. No, I'd watch Eternals again. Oh man, because there's still things in there I want to. Because there's, there's a lot to take in. There's a lot taken in Shang Chi. Those fucking fight scenes are phenomenal. But look, I I I like I said I like the movie, and I Wait, so what, what do you rate it out of ten? Yeah, I I'm I'm gonna go. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it was a, I, if I'm not mistaken, I said it was a a, a seven point five. You know, anywhere between a seven point five to a seven point nine. I think it was a C F a, a, a. Here's the thing: it was beautifully shot. Right. So I'm not taking anything away from that. I just the what I okay. Here's what I didn't really like so much about the movie. I thought the acting was a little dry. I didn't really connect with any of the characters. The I, the actually the only character I connected with is the one character that they didn't use at all in the movie, which is Dane. I wanted more of that character. I feel like he might have been. Uh, I knew AJ. I, I knew that this guy was the Icarus was the bad like, guy. I feel right like away. he, he might have been a little bit overstated because he he didn't have anything more than a cameo. This this, this wasn't his movie. No, absolutely not. It sets up a lot for him though. But what I I like I knew Icarus was a bad guy right away. How? I just I I mean I just knew he was the bad guy right I away. Didn't. Yeah, I knew he was a bad guy right away. I didn't. Yeah, I knew he was a bad. I like I I just I knew he was a bad guy. I was like, okay, he's the bad guy. He's just showing up. He you know, I I knew he had something to do with it. 
It it just I don't I, look. I didn't. I first of all, he wasn't even like he just m- magically shows up when that deviant all of a sudden attacks. I wouldn't even say he's a bad guy. He was the antagonist, was he not? At a point. But he's not like... um, He's just following orders thing? So, if anything, he's a a zealot. Okay. He he didn't do anything um, with the intent, like... He didn't wish ill upon others. He just wants to fulfill the goals of the celestials. Right. He's like, okay, yeah, right. But he's the bad guy because he's trying to kill Earth. He's okay with letting that die. Like I understand what you're saying, but like, I, again, I, 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 I had problems with the film, and this is just one of those things that I had a problem with, man. Wait, I, do you have a problem with him being a bad guy? Uh, you know, here's the thing. I don't know enough about the story to know if he should be a good guy or a bad guy. Um, you know, I know that they changed a lot. And again, they, this is part of the MCU's plan. They are changing a lot of the original storylines. This is also because The way the MCU is like a lot of things are set in stone are still fluid, but like, these are definitely a set of characters that like, yeah, it's like I don't have any problem with them changing uh, genders or, or uh, no, I don't have sw- a switching up origins because these no. these aren't like uh, Spider Man or Iron Man and Captain America, uh, right? Tier you can, level characters with you can like play with these with like hardcore fan bases. These are characters that you can adapt them to the current state of the MCU, as opposed because they have a history going back to like the sixties, right? That all of that is not going to fit in with the current, um, with the you know the current um, standing of the MCU and of the, course. the things that have happened. Uh, so notable changes is them being synthetic beings and no right. Olympia, which is, um, and so one of the Eternals brother, one one of the Eternals is, and this is from the comics. Uh, Thanos' brother. Right. Or half-brother. Right. He shows up at the end. Yeah, at Star Fox. Right. So, and he, and uh, Pip, who uh, was kind of revolting to look at. Uh, Pip? Yeah, the Which, troll. Pip the troll. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Even mentioned him being Thanos' brother. So, I'm kind of curious to see how that, uh, what the backstory is there. Because, you know, in the comics, the Eternals and Deviants, like, they're a race right. of beings. Right, created by the Celestials. Right. Um, and Thanos is uh, Star Fox's brother, but he just hap- he has that appearance because he has that recessive Deviant gene, right? Okay. When he was born. I thought Deviants were... Uh, horrible looking like they didn't look like like the Eternals did right like in a sense like but Star Fox is a good looking dude no 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 so uh, Thanos had that ah uh, so got like you. that's on, why he's on, purple so like on that planet uh, like when that da- yeah when uh, when Thanos is born he's he's like that's part of the reason he grows up the way he does because he's an outcast you know discriminated against Cause he doesn't, you know what I mean? Gotcha. 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 But in the MCU now it's been determined that, uh, the Eternals are synthetic beings and the deviants also totally different. Well, backstory. Doesn't that also play into the backstory of the X-Men of the mutant gene? Because aren't, aren't, didn't the, didn't, didn't the Eternals kind of create the X-Men by breeding with uh, humans? Not no, not breeding. There's like there was an eternal that came to Earth like millions of years ago and like essentially crash landed here. And that's apparently where like a lot of that comes from. Okay. But that's like a whole nother Okay. Um also 
But yeah, like like the Eternals have a like there's a lot to get into right. with that. Right. Um, you know, one of the other things that I got mad about, they killed one of my favorite characters, man. Oh. The Asian cat. Oh, Gilgamesh? Yeah, man. He was dope. <laughs> I liked him. Yeah, he was. Um I, I remember. He, yeah. Uh I was all right, so one of the big complaints from people, because here's the thing. I watched the movie with, you know, Mad Late, and with all this stuff in mind that I'd heard about it, mm-hmm. some of it vague, some of it specific, but most of it not good. And I kept all that in mind. And then once I watched the movie, I went and, and read up uh, a bunch of the the critic reviews and what they had to say about it. Right. And why. And kind of stacked it up next to my observations and understanding. So uh, a lot of, so I remember when the movie was first coming out and people were upset because apparently they heard the movie was getting bad reviews Mm -hmm. from the critics are like preliminary screenings, right? Due to uh, uh, two gay characters kissing, right? What? At least I've seen I've I, I seen a whole lot of that on Twitter. Oh, I mean, so I don't even notice that shit anymore, man. I mean, like it's not even something to notice. It's just uh, it's so stupid. So, like a lot of critics, why were, were critics upset about that? No, I I don't even know if they were, but so like. I was reading some critic reviews and they were like, the fans are giving backlash because they say the critics are being unfair. Like the critics were trying to say like the reasons they didn't like this movie. And the fans are saying like they're nitpicking, uh, you know, because of this or because of that. Uh, but really, on like, on like both sides, there was like a level of uh, ridiculousness. First of all, fucking face those. Uh, was fucking super awesome. But um, which one was that? The guy with the uh, um the black dude. Yeah, with the uh, with the the mechanical stuff that he can create and build and stuff. Yeah, there's a that dude was awesome. Oh fuck, what's his power called? He's a um. I don't know, but he had like the fucking, uh, yeah, he had the the powers tech, to like tech power yeah, to yeah. to build stuff. Um, yeah, he was. He, is that the characters that they were talking about? Because he he was gay. Yeah. Oh, whatever. So bro. that's the so like this is like the first uh <laughs> like same sex shared kiss on screen in the MCU movie. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. I think so. Okay. Okay. And then it was like a thing because apparently like the movie is not being shown. In like certain countries around the world, because like Marvel, like stood by it and like we're they not going to take this. Edit. We're not, we're not Good, take they should it. They should it. Fuck other countries. And um, but yeah, and then another thing I remember seeing headlines about like this is going to be the first sex scene in the MCU, <laughs> which as uh, like one critic put it, it was like uh, they said the sex scene was like uh two. Pieces of unbuttered toast left on the counter was the equivalent of uh, Icarus and Cersei on the beach, yeah. which was apt. That was definitely something I agree with 100%. <laughs> like, that totally could have been left out. It was. Uh, I told you. There was it, some... it did, one thing it did do, it didn't build up the romance between them initially very well. There, there was a lot of inconsistent character development. Yeah. And you just kind of like. Saw saw things at intervals, but not really the leading up to them. Well, you weren't really shown that properly for a lot of different things, especially the fucking shit with Sprite and Icarus. Right, right. Like in the very in the beginning of the movie, they showed her projecting herself as uh like an adult Adult woman. Yeah, and then. The guy went to touch her hand, and obviously it's an illusion. Right. But that was in the midst of so much other shit happening that I, like, completely forgot about it. Like, at the time, I was like, 
like I didn't get it at all. Right. So and that's, that's immediately one of the, the deviant shows up in that yeah. same scene. So like there were, but um, the director Chloe, whatever her last name is, yeah, she definitely had a grand vision for this film. And I'm not mad at it being like three hours long. I'm not mad at the fucking uh, the landscape of the film fucking uh, spread thin. Okay. I'm not mad at the array of characters and who they did and didn't get into. Also, it's clearly set up for uh, for them to pop up. A bunch of other projects off of this. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean. Because some of them are on Earth. Some of them yeah. are taken by. Um, the Celestials at the end. Arisham. Right. Some of them were um, went into space. So, like, it's not even set up necessarily for, like, Eternals 2. And they're all together. Like, I see them. Right. In a bunch of different areas. It's going to be interesting. Um. Again, I just think it's going to be interesting to watch. I just didn't. I'm with you on like the plot development didn't get me the way that they were. They were kind of going all over the place. Like I felt like if they would have done all that ancient stuff first. Right. And then develop the characters that way. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like instead of kind of doing it in flashbacks. Yeah. And what that wasn't crazy about. I would have felt better about it. Was the flashbacks. And the portrayals of ancient Earth, it was just kind of that random and jarring, like that. I, like I didn't really resonate with the whole Babylon thing. Or like, none I, of that. okay, see, here's the thing. I thought that that was super cool, and I think that, that was like a wasted opportunity. Like, it's a it's a really cool idea to have them, you know, in the 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 hanging gardens of babylon right they're just chilling it literally in the hang it looks like one of the ancient wonders of the world that no longer exists right it's beautiful right but they don't like you just see them defend it right and then you see them in like some room like i just felt like they're i felt like a lot of the story should have should have taken place in the ancient world and then we sh- we like midway through the film we should have got to modern day you know and what was happening now yeah, like as great as this movie was shot and how good it looked, all the ancient back shots, uh, which is also a metaphor for old people fucking, <laughs> uh, were just like lacking to me and didn't really bring yeah. anything to it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. With that being said, so, and the other big thing about this movie that like had to be addressed like in the trailers before it even came out Mm -hmm. was why didn't they help out uh thanos with thanos right right but you see like these first of all these people are they're not even people they're not well they're they're people they're not human right they're not heroes like they're soldiers yeah they came there with a with a purpose right it was like obviously they've been integrated into human society and they gone through a lot of things that made them question themselves and their purpose. And so, like, a lot of people said, like, that w- the the reasoning was weak. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, like, lazy writing, like, and on Marvels. But it made sense to me. I, I don't. And I, it's smart. I think it's smart by Marvel to do it that way. And you see uh, Ajax, they may not have taken part in that. Because for them, Earth is like one planet among billions, right? Right. Especially for her, who has her memories. Oh, yeah. But that made such an impact on her that she was wanting to go against the Celestials. Right. Right, because she's the only one that doesn't get erased. Right. The others get erased. That's right. And um, yeah. So that was that was uh, on par for me. I would. I just want to say, damn, Selma Hayek is beautiful, bro. What? She, bro, she's still smart. When she was riding that horse, living on that <laughs> ranch, bro, I was like, what? That's the luckiest horse in the world. I never wanted to be a horse so bad in my life. 
I never wanted to be a saddle so bad in my life, to be perfectly honest with you. She's hot, man. She is hot. Look, last episode, we spent way too much time, or not last, a few episodes ago, we spent way too much time talking about uh, goats and sheep, I'm not talking about horses. We're not talking about horses today? It is not. No more, okay. ho- no more horse play. I was watching Yellowstone. I was watching horse. Yellowstone today, yesterday's episode. At one of the guys had to jack off a horse <laughs> to collect its semen. It was funny. <laughs> That's enough out of you. <laughs> so here's the other thing I seen. Yeah. Seeing people complaining about uh, uh, this movie. Um, couldn't do all it might have been capable of because it was a superhero movie in terms of uh, ad- addressing like psychologically the effects of uh, immortality. Okay. I mean, here's the thing I just watched uh, The Old Guard on Netflix. Oh, that's a good movie, man. Which is uh, a more, you know, mor- immortal mercenaries. And it was, you know, like that's something. It, it's whatever, man. Like, I thought people I, people were looking for a lot of reasons to be uh, to find fault with the Eternals. I feel like there's a lot of nitpicking. First of all, uh, it's a fucking comic if, book movie. If you hate on a movie because it's the superhero genre, you shouldn't. You don't even got no business writing about it. Okay. Like, yeah, like, you think it's in your territory and you qualify because it's a movie and you watch movies and you critique them, okay? But if you don't read comic books and you're watching a comic book movie, right? okay, you're going to fucking fall short because everybody is so fucking... Cause well, look at the Snyder thing, man. When you When you're not the underdog anymore... And these movies are successful because people were saying this movie didn't explore certain themes for uh, certain themes further because it's a Marvel movie and it's owned by Disney and, you know, the Disney shareholders. OK, people, what people are so fucking upset what? about it being a Marvel movie. But here's the thing. We the motherfuckers that been waiting for the for the technology to catch up for these movies to be made, okay? We don't give a fuck, you know. <laughs> all, all respect to motherfuckers like Scorsese and Quentin Tarantino. Hey, easy, easy, easy. They have a right to bitch. They have a right to bitch. They make they make classic movies, but here's the thing: they have a right to bitch, but their bitching sounds like little bitches. Like, and I don't think Tarantino has. Like shit on Marvel movies, yeah, but I, I know Scorsese I'll, has. I'll, I'll just throw that name out. Yeah, there. I know Scorsese I mean, has the mother the motherfuckers that that watch him that uh you know uh film critics, not even movie critics, film critics, because you think that sound more <laughs> dignified. All right, you got to look at this shit from a comic book perspective first and foremost, and there's like yeah, like. They're transcribing onto another form of media, but there's a fucking shit ton of lore right. to unpack. So the first thing I want to say is that I haven't heard anyone say is I think the significance of Tiamat, that's the celestial that she turned to stone, Cersei, mm-hmm. being turned to stone like that, that's going to be the new base of the Avengers. What? The base of Avengers right now, Avengers Mountain, is the body of a dead celestial in oh. the in the comics. Ah, oh. his the fucking top of his head mm-hmm. is Black Panther's room. Tony Stark's room is in one, like one of his fucking eyes. They they got all this fucking crazy shit going on from the uh, technology. And uh, the celestial energy in his right, body. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Avengers Mountain in the comics is the body of a celestial. When I saw that, that was like an aha moment for me. Because now they don't have Avengers Tower. Right. Oh, that's a good call, Matt. That's a good call. I didn't even pick that up. 
That's a really good call. I, I haven't seen anybody. I haven't seen anybody talk about it. That's a really good pickup from you, man. Now, did his head come out or just his hands? It looked like it was just his hand, but no, his his head sticking out. Is it? And like one hand, like kind of like this. Okay, so don't even get me started on the repercussions of what that would have happened to Earth if that would have actually happened. They didn't. They didn't <laughs> go into too much depth about like scientifically how the earth would have exploded if somebody would have done if something like that would have happened yeah exactly <laughs> like how like how much of him was out and <laughs> that was kind of like a crazy curveball for me like when they first showed that um the hive mind thing not not the uh, hive mind but when a Ar- Arishma uh, oh shows it to him yeah like when the, when it, the, yeah, the yeah, visualization yeah, 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 yeah. i was like what the f- oh shit what the fuck but um yeah, and I thought that was kind of I thought that was kind of cool too when she was like, "Oh, like I felt Tiamat uh like he joined in our unimind." Right. And um cuz in the comics I don't think he's like such a good celestial t- towards Earth cuz and there's also are any of them good celestials towards Earth? Yeah, like uh like I think he's called like the progenitor. Like there, there have been celestials like, and also too, there's some shit. It's called like the horde, or the I think it's the horde of the hive. That like, cause the apparently the celestials have, uh, natural enemies, but that's when you like really get into like the deep dark right. cosmic shit of right. Marvel, which is like some of it's like way out there, super but, crazy shit out there. <laughs> cause that's like, right now Thanos is like a household name, right? But in Marvel and like. Also, the visual portrayal of the Celestials is fucking awesome. I can't wait to see Galactus. <laughs> really can't. But when he appeared to take uh, Kurgi or Fa- and Phaestos and Cersei. Oh, yeah. And then he fucking... And, oh, yeah. back and like yeah. teleported back. <laughs> that was so fucking cool. Now, I don't know... Like if Neil deGrasse Tyson would say that that was possible without like up, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson would have had a problem with <laughs> all of it, with, with like the fucking upheaval of like gravity with like a being of that size like <laughs> teleporting like what that would fucking cause. But it, the movie know, definitely the movie definitely does not operate in the world of science. Yeah, this was definitely pushing <laughs> the boundaries of space <laughs> magic. <laughs> definitely, yeah. <laughs> but that's like Marvel comics, like. On a semi-regular basis, you'll see, you see, you know, they draw them so, you know, the uh, the personifications of eternity and yes. death yeah, are, yeah, like, yeah. always and uh, a few other motherfuckers yeah, always meeting in the fucking depth of, of space. And, you know, and Thanos is always trying to, like, power up to that level because he, and, you know, they always... uh. Talking down on him. I mean, the guy had the Infinity Gauntlet at one point. I mean, you know, I think I think they should show Thanos a little bit of respect. So this is, uh, I'm tired of people acting brand new about this shit. <laughs> Get with it. Cause Seriously. This is part of it. Okay, because people, like another critic was talking about like basically, um, oh, this is just making it easier for Marvel to ease into uh, mutants and vampires and stuff, and pretend like they've always been around, always been around with this multiverse reality warp and stuff. They're basically making it out like Marvel's using this just as a, a, a way, a way to incorporate. Uh, these things uh, retroactively into the MCU. I'm like, motherfucker, this shit. It's like the, all that stuff is all that stuff is there. Like it's just there. Like, if, like if, if you buy into the Mar- if you buy into Marvel, you just know that all this stuff is always there. You know what I'm saying? Like they haven't even gotten to the street level stuff, really. I mean, outside of the TV shows that aren't canon, um, you know. Uh, there's so much there that they can use. I don't know. Why do people act like, why do people talk like that? Like if you're going to, if you're going to uh, plug in your keyboard, if you're going to open your mouth to review 
a Marvel movie. Also, oh, before you open your mouth, open a fucking comic book. Look at the source material before you just go off on a tangent. It's because the movie's a movie and it should be rated. Uh, it should be able to stand on, on its own. Right. But it has a greater cultural significance. And it like, plays a yeah. bigger role in things, too. That's kind of how the MCU works, man. Like everything, every every everything builds a bigger role into a bigger role into a bigger role, and it makes it easier to you for you to believe this greater universe. You know what I'm saying? Like you couldn't have just introduced Star Lord in you know in Guardians of the Galaxy in Avengers: Infinity War. Like you had to build it up, right? You have to create this world. And at first, people don't know these characters; they don't know their stories, but they shouldn't shit on them, you know. Uh, I I just I think it's I think it's e I think it's just easy for people to say that, but those fucking movies are entertaining. They're all entertaining. E look, I even Eternals, I which I wasn't my favorite Marvel movie. It was still entertaining. I still liked it. I just probably wouldn't watch it over Shang Chi. My mom likes Guardian of the Galaxy. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think she's ever read a comic book. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun movie. That's like everybody loves to uh, hate you. When you're number one, and Marvel has fucking done the impossible. Dominated, son. Like, just because they're doing good now, don't fucking forget the roots of Marvel Studios and where they came from. This shit was not overnight. Dude. And just because they're the A-list movies right now, and what everyone's talking about, and you know what I'm saying? Just because it's out there. For uh, mass consumption, uh, doesn't mean y'all got a right to an opinion. So <laughs> they <do>. shut the <laughs> fuck up. Uh, I was gonna say something else. Oh yeah, everybody's talking about the sex scene, the same sex kiss. Nobody's talking about the first on-screen suicide. Oh yeah. Uh, by the way, if uh. You know, you have a bad thought, so you should call the suicide hotline and talk to a friend. You know, they ain't no joke. You're, you're valuable. And we love you. You're the best. I love you. <laughs> Icarus, right? Mm hmm You say he's the bad guy. Right. But he's not a bad guy. He's doing what he thinks is right. And you could tell, and that shit was fucked up. Killing Ajax took a toll on him. Yeah. You seen how big that fucking Celestial was? Like, for him, like, that's God. That's his creator. Right. Literally. No, I, I, I get it. And he's like, this is the mission. Ajax confides in him. I think these people... Are worth saving, right? He didn't say, nah, fuck him. He said, you want me to trade the lives of one planet for the billions of planets that are going to support the the hundreds of billions that this the the that the celestial from this planet is going to create? This is not like a antagonistic character acting out of like his own selfish needs, right? Right, he's he's basically uh, like a zealot, like a, right. a a religious fanatic in a sense. He takes her out. He does, but he knows, and he sees the opportunity of the deviants returning, which was also like uh, I don't know if anyone picked up on like um, uh, also I. I guess like artistic commentary on climate change. I don't yeah. know if any, well, I mean there's a lot there's a lot of shit going on here, so I'm not surprised everyone didn't notice everything. Right. That oh the ice caps it, are melting no, right. and we missed some deviants. <laughs> Which as Oops. a as a plot device was like, whatever. There was so much shit going on, you didn't even have time to question it. He's trying to fathom all this other shit. Cause at some point the movie kind of like wades along at his you. own slow pace. And then all of a sudden, you're just fucking 
inundated with all sorts of visual, historical information all at once. So his line of thinking is the deviants are going to keep them busy until it's time. Right. He didn't count on the Ajax's fear, next fear, communication device passing to Cersei. So he thought he was going to be the leader or something. Yeah. Or at least he didn't. He didn't think it was going to be Cersei. Even if he didn't think it was going to be her, it might not have been something he knew was going to happen. That's probably true, too. I like didn't, you know, so uh, we don't really have a clear understanding about how those things work. I have, I have something I want to say, too, but go ahead. Finish. No, no, go ahead. No, 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 finish. No, no, because no, mine is a whole different tangent that I want to get into just real quick. But go ahead. So they, first of all, and um, how were they able to so quickly find everybody um, when they clearly hadn't been keeping in touch? I don't know. They didn't really like that. They just show, showing up at motherfuckers' doorsteps in other countries. Right. That's like, <laughs> what's his name, Kingo? Yeah. Him, maybe he's a fucking movie star. Yeah. Oh, here's the thing too. I, that's that's the character that I like the most, actually. His his uh his valet. Yeah. <laughs> this is funny. Here's the thing. This wasn't a Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Like you had some fucking uh space robot shit. Mm-hmm. But it's not that it was heavy on the jokes. This is how they fucked up. Because they wanted people to watch it. Every single fucking joke, and they were funny. Mm-hmm. That's like, yo, the first time he he tried to kill me 50 years ago, he thought I was a vampire. He said, oh, I apologize to you so many times, sir. He said, not enough times. Close, but not enough. Every single fucking joke was in the fucking trailers. Every single one. Uh, so now I'm watching it like, oh my, I fucking seen this already. Right. I hate when they do that. If anything, they could have let one go. Yeah. But every single fucking joke. So that took away from the movie. Okay. So are you done with his suicide? No. Okay. So they're going around gathering the team. That was aside from the ancient back shots. The slowest, dumbest part of the movie? Was they could have done a better job Uh with people's uh, current life backstory. I agree. Because I would have liked to see some of that. Like, Kingo's is really the only one. That's his name, right? Yeah, Kingo. Okay. Yeah. Because they needed... To give you a little context there so that they could tell you why they got a private jet to fly around in, right? <laughs> and then uh, Athena and Gilgamesh are, you know, living out in the, in desert. the middle of nowhere because she might snap at any given moment. Uh, I would have liked to see a little bit more from face dose between Hiroshima and this current lifestyle. Uh, and this current, I didn't mean to say lifestyle, uh, between Hiroshima And his current life with his husband and son. Right. I would like to see a little bit more in between there. Also, like, that random moment. Like, I don't know what it was. Every time they did uh, a... What's that that shit called? What? Every time they did a flashback to the past. Oh, yeah. It was just so fucking weird and out of place. Like, he's... I told you. He's just there in the... Bro, he's there on the ground in Hiroshima and Ajax is with them. Like, it was just, so, like, some of the, it was just, also, someone really didn't like that because they said it was, like, subconsciously, uh, it was, like, you, you put in two people of color in the position for blame. Oh, my God. But, uh, Jesus. Yo, know, like, people were looking for any reason to hate on the movie. Reason from any angle. 
Anyways, again, off track, I'm talking about a... Suicide of Icarus. Yeah. So they get them together, and they they want to save humanity. They figure out a way to do it. Icarus has to reveal himself because they might actually be able to pull this off. Right. That was that was like he didn't want to do that. This is like his last resort. Right. So first of all, it and it took me the whole fucking movie, and I still wasn't sure if Sprite was a boy or a girl. I realized she's a girl. Her, yeah, but it, yes, because she's in love with. But the way. Yeah. So she looked like a little boy. The whole, the, the 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 way they did the love child. Not even a love triangle thing was weird. That was very weird. Oh, one of my favorite moments uh, was when Druig knocked her out with a rock. Okay. <laughs> okay. Get back to what you were doing because you're you're all over the place. Just like the movie. Yes. Just to, like the movie. So it's uh And I want to get to my point because I want to see if you think that it's relevant. Okay. Well, while I'm, while I'm thinking about Druig real quick, because that, that's the thing with the movie, is there's so many different, on one hand, you got Phaistos, the inventor, mm-hmm. and he, he's got his uh, version of guilt. Right. Then you got uh, Druig, who's got his version of guilt, right? Because he's like, I could I could stop him. I could stop everything. You give it all these characters at once. Mm -hmm. And even at damn near three hours, you can't even really get into the whole thing. All the different stuff. Because there's there's a lot. There's a lot. And I I, I don't really fault the movie for that in that regard. Because... It got it got into it enough for me mm-hmm. to be happy for this movie. I the movie set on such a grand scale, thematically and visually, and the worst things for me were the the flashbacks, which were offbeat from the rest of the movie, right? And things happening. And characters making decisions when there's so much going on, and you don't have enough context at that moment. That, like, when Sprite goes with Icarus, it's it, it's like there's a lot of things, and then uh, there's a lot of things that they didn't give enough context to that characters are taking action, right? That you just kind of wait, hold on, why is he doing that? And then something else is happening over here. Something else has happened over here with them. But yeah, so ultimately, um, they're able to hold Icarus down long enough to get uh, the Unimind going, which is a phrase from the comics. They didn't pick that at random. I know, but I just, whatever. And um, so Icarus comes back. Like, they all all gathered there. Mm -hmm. Tiamat's dead. Mm-hmm. And I thought at first he flew into space, and right. I'm like, okay, I guess he's going to he's going back to uh, uh Arishma. I think I might be saying his name wrong now, but then first of all, that was a fucking cool shot. It was Every a cool t- shot. It, that was a cool shot. Then he just fucking flew into the sun. Into the sun. Yeah, he didn't. It was just, and it, then, and then it went right back down to Earth. And what were they figuring out there? I was like, hold up, what the? Did he really just? Yeah. And it definitely he showed him flying into the sun. Yeah, like there was no mistake about it. No. So first of all, that was fucking cool, in the regard of you know his name's Icarus. Right. So like these are the Eternals are all based off. People from uh, yeah. ancient history. Yeah. Gilgamesh's tale, Athena, Athena. So the way they do it in the movie, it's like 
yeah, these are their names. Right. And Sprite put these stories. Like, she the one that came up with Icarus. She, you know. Right. Flew too close to the sun. So they, they kind of flipped the script uh, and kind of fitted them to history retroactively like that. Just in that aspect, it was like, it was kind of cool they had him flying to the sun. Okay. But on screen suicide in a Marvel movie? I wasn't expecting that. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, failed soldier, uh, you know, and he takes the brunt of it, and he's now an outcast from his team because he tried to kill him. Uh, And the love of his life doesn't want to be the love of his life anymore. Uh, You know, sad. It sucked. But his acting was eh. So I'm okay with him not being in the movies anymore. Um, wow, that was harsh. Yeah. Um, so. So. Do you know what this movie did that I thought isn't talked about enough? What? So you ever wonder why? Okay, so you know, you know in the DC universe the reason why earth is so important why? like to space like like for instance why why um why dark side wants earth because the anti-life equation is on earth like oh, the earth right, itself right, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. so it makes earth a pivotal point in like all this cosmic craziness that's going on in the world or in the universe right right there's a reason for the for them to come here right um I think I think what they did with the celestial helps the 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 Marvel Cinematic Universe in the same or the Marvel Universe in the same way, right? Because now you now like Thanos, you know, Thanos had to come here. All the Infinity Stones were here, right? At one point or another, right? Like why why is there all this like activity on this planet, right? And like you find out that like from the get go, this planet was special, like that there was a reason for all of it, right? That like maybe maybe there was our celestial body already in the Earth, and maybe that kind of I don't know. I think it I think it kind of helps create that like reason why Earth is special. You know what I'm saying? Like why it plays like such a huge role in this bigger galaxy and universe. You get a popping over here. You know, um, uh, <laughs> listen, Vegas Thor gets it popping. <laughs> all right. Vegas Thor gets it popping. I like Vegas Thor. Viva Las Vegas. That was great. I love that. Um, but uh, I, I, that's what I think. I, I, I think it, it definitely helps. I, I'm very surprised that nobody else has picked up on the Avenger Towers thing. I think that's a good call by you. That'd be cool to see. cool to see oh yeah i'm gonna um i'm gonna uh show you the comics so you can see it okay i, I was literally uh just read and, and it's also in like the most one of the more current iterations of the avengers oh, shit it was given and it was uh specifically given to them as a gift after they had uh some run and they, they were like you know you should you should uh I'm gonna show you the comic. It's pretty fucking okay. cool. Is is the body on Earth? Yeah. So they called like Avengers Mountain or whatever. And it's uh you got Black Panther, Iron Man, Cap, Blade, uh Ghost Rider, but not Johnny Blaze, the um Spanish dude? Yeah. So yeah, it's a uh, she hulk is a is a dope lineup. Okay, and it's visually pretty dope. I love the scale of this movie mm-hmm. physically, and I think that's gonna be dope, bro. Like the way his head is there sticking out of the ocean. <laughs> I gotta I gotta see that again because I I thought it was just his hand, but maybe nah, that was that's his head. Um. Yeah, this movie is a lot to unpack. Said that, and like with anything that there's an abundance of, uh, it's just more material for people to find problems with. So they did. 
Uh, I said my piece on it. And even with all that, I still give it 8.5, damn near 9. Uh, definitely uh, highly recommend it uh, for shrooms. It was visually and emotionally fucking awesome. <laughs> like, I was, I I literally don't even have the words. Well. Like, I think I, especially. How'd you like hearing Blade at the end? Oh. That was dope. I also think the fucking, uh, so I never even heard one mention of the first uh, after credit scene. Oh, yeah, with Star Fox. With Star Fox. And apparently that's played by Harry Styles. Yeah. Which someone else had a problem with. Yeah. They're like, oh, Harry Styles is in the MCU and something about like sex appeal. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, just shut the fuck up. He's supposed to be good looking. <laughs> so they got a, the fucking guy from the boy band. Who gives a fuck? That's great for them. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Pip was like kind of <laughs> unappealing to me. Yeah. Even though Patton Oswalt is fucking awesome. He's great. That's his second MCU appearance now. Yeah. Is he pl- or, well, I guess he's not part of the MCU. because Well, Agents of, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a different timeline. Oh, actually third then, because he's also the voice of MODOK on the Hulu TV series. Well, that's definitely not canon. Right, that's definitely not canon. And man. that is super irreverent and funny. And just fucking, fucking wacky. It's wacky. It's a wacky ass show. That's for sure. But um, yeah. I Sorry, was, was kind of that kind of like threw my focus looking at Pip. And um, granted, you know, like that's definitely something from the comics. But I was just like, oh my god, here's another fucking mascot for them, <laughs> fucking uh, ugly little troll. But yeah, this is, um, as far as setting things up, so we got Angelina Jolie and the other two, what's their face? Flying through space. Right. Star Fox has joined them. Right. The other Do you three. realize how many cool, aside from, so I guess Guardians of the Galaxy franchise is coming to an end. Yeah. Well, no, it's not coming to an end. Awesome. Do you know how many fucking great space movies we're about to get? Right. This is a fucking another one, and I'm fucking here for it. I love space movies. James Gunn's trilogy is coming to an end. They're going to have another iteration of that team. There's no way, especially with the introduction of Adam Warlock. There's there's no way that they're... I mean, I even heard that they might do... uh, like a Sylvester Stallone led team as well. Like I saw him in costume on his Instagram the other day. Who Sylvester? Yeah. Oh, um, this is such a this is so fucking awesome. Yeah. To see the scope of the um cosmic side of the MCU, it, which is really actually one of my favorite play. things because it's. It's not stuff that everybody knows about, so they have so much. And with the technology, they just have so much leeway to do so many cool and even like things. the X Men aren't even in play yet, right? But like, there's the fuck you the fucking X Men do so much shit like in with space. the Shi'ar Empire, yeah, like so much <laughs> shit than just beyond fighting uh, yeah. the mutant bigotry on Earth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's, you know, fucking ten. You know, they did how many movies? Twenty something. Well, imagine the fucking <laughs> ten years when we when we've got fucking fifty MCU movies. Oh like this is God. gonna be insane. It uh, it's gonna be awesome. I mean, you know, and I'm gonna watch them off. every single one of them. They're pulling them off. I Yo, can't I can't wait for the Amazing Spider. All right, not Amazing Spider Man. Uh, Into the Spider Verse two and the Spider Man drops soon, right? Yeah. No way home. Like yeah. Like Super this soon. month, right? Sometime. Yeah. 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 Uh, we'll see. I'm interested in watching that in the theater with you at a matinee. If you like, I'm down. You already know I'm down. Double handies for the whole fucking movie theater staff to watch. There you go. Give them a show. 
Uh, we're pretty much out of time. Tomorrow we can get into Hawkeye. Oh, I'm actually liking Hawkeye. I'm liking it. They we got a lot of haters on that show, and I like it. And this last show was by far their best one. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah, Hawkeye's cool. The action was sick in this last one. Yeah, and as always, uh, What's-His-Face is killing it. It's Clint Barton. Oh. I really. <laughs> Jeremy Renner? Yeah, Jeremy Renner. Um, He's fucking awesome, man. The girl playing the whole Kate Bishop. Uh, You don't like her, huh? She has her moments I like her. She's growing on me. And I feel like it's the writer's fault. You think they're making her a little too whimsical? Make her, like, annoying as fuck. Like, (laughs) and then the whole thing was she's sitting there with her mom and uh, her stepdad, who's clearly an evil dude. (laughs) I like that guy, though. (laughs) And it's just so fucking bizarre. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're on a venture business partner slash friend. Like, that was such, (laughs) such a fucking dumb scene with dumb dialogue and he didn't have anything to say i think it was just like a waste of a scene (laughs) other than that like it was like a great episode uh the whole larp side of things it's so funny (laughs) a little bit ridiculous for me so funny i think it's great i think it's great uh i don't i know he's like retired right now but why doesn't he have any assets he can tap into whatsoever uh well so have you heard the rumor well, what? That his wife is oh, yeah, actually Mockingbird. Mockingbird, yeah. And the watch belongs to who? I don't know. Who does the Rolex belong to? Why is the Rolex so important? Oh yeah, well, I'm. I'm kinda, who, who do you think? Who do you think the Rolex is? It Tony Stark's Rolex? Is I'm, it Captain I'm, America's Rolex? Is it no Nick Fury's Rolex? Is it Howard Stark's Rolex? Whose Rolex is it, Matthew? Uh, I'm looking forward to. <laughs> Another clash with uh, Yelena and oh. having that get cleared up. I'm sure there's going to be an emotional moment yeah. coming up with them. I like Hawkeye. I, I've, for a long time, I have said this. I'm probably one of the very few who cares. I think it would be so badass if they did a West Coast Avengers and he led the team somehow. I think that would be super cool. Like, do a West Coast Adventures, but do it with, like, like all the teen, like almost like a Teen Titans, mm, you know. I'll see that? It'd be fun. I don't know. I just, you know, I love all of it, man. I, I I hate when people shit on it as much as they do. Like, you know, it's all just fun. You know, it's the same thing with the DC universe, man. I, like what they did to J- J- Zack Snyder's vision, you know, was was stupid and didn't have any foresight. And if you if you watch the Snyder cut, you know, it's a, it's a fucking really good movie. I wish they would have let him do more. Like they didn't make him edit Batman versus Superman so much, even though that was, even though I just thought that was poorly written, but I'm also super psyched for the Batman. Oh, 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 uh, so oh, I yeah. hear, I hear, I hear it's more of a horror movie than I it know. Is. I, <laughs> I'm here for it. I think so, it's gonna be sick. So the one thing that I've I have heard from the beginning, and it's a one thing I really like, is that it's supposed to be more detective driven than any yeah. other Batman movie. And so I kind of like the Matrix. I'm not watching the previews for it. I want to be like I've saw the one preview for it, and then that was it. You know. Speaking of the Matrix, it comes gonna, out in you, nine days. Are you going to get those shoes? Well, uh, no, I'm not going to get those shoes. I thought they were awesome. Yeah, they are awesome, but I'm not going to buy those shoes. I mean, I, I, where am I going to wear Matrix shoes to? I'm not fucking. 20. Where are you not going to wear Matrix shoes? I'm to? I'm not fucking wearing Matrix. Sh- uh, do they let? Do they give me the powers of Neo? Because if they gave me the powers of Neo, I buy them hands down. Do they let me look like Keanu Reeves? Buy them hands down. Do they let me blow Keanu Reeves? Buy them hands <laughs> down. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Yeah, we're off the rails here. Yeah, that's folks. it. Um, but I, I, yeah, I'm looking forward to that, dude. Nine days, buddy. Nine days. You know what's crazy? I'm gonna be in fucking Disney World on the day that the Matrix comes out. So I have to wake up at three o'clock in the morning to watch You're the in Matrix. Disney World a lot. Yeah, man, I love fucking Disney World. It's fucking it's the happiest place on earth, motherfucker. So yeah. Eternals <laughs> is uh, Strom's approved. I highly recommend it. It was an amazing. We here at Shrooms average it out at a B. Plus. Uh, 
plus. B. Well, I meant shrooms <laughs> approved as in uh, you should Go definitely easy. eat shrooms and watch Eternals. And you will have great internal reflection. <laughs> I assure you. Uh, you got anything else, buddy? Uh, I think I'm good, man. Uh, I want to say that it was fun talking with you about this. Uh, for all you nerds out there that are still listening to us, thank you for listening. We appreciate it. Good night. And good luck. I'm stealing that from Edward R. Morrow. Uh, I got some more stuff. I think I'll just save it for tomorrow Friday's episode. Okay. Yeah, I got I got a lot of stuff here, but oh, we have special it, guests too. It, t- it, t- it took a long time to talk about Eternals. It was a fucking long ass movie. It was two and hours and forty five fucking minutes, forty three minutes. Sorry, it was two minutes. Icarus flew too close to the sun. He flew into the sun. <laughs> Love you. That was fucking crazy. That caught me off guard so much. Did it really? It did. That's why I knew I knew he was a bad guy because of the love interest. That's how I knew he was a bad guy. I was trying to remember why I knew he was a bad guy. That's why I knew. All right, I got to pee. End this. Okay. Shrooms to Skyrim with Matthew and Hiram. Shrooms to Skyrim with Matthew and Hiram.